So far, we have been writing our Snowpark Python program using VS Code Editor and running it locally by establishing a connection to a Snowflake instance. And if you look at this setup, the queries are being executed in the Snowflake instance and the query translation from data frame to SQL are happening in our local machine via Snowpark API library. The local machine is acting as a sandbox or a Snowpark runtime environment. However, when we plan to move this program to production environment, you cannot have a local machine as a final runtime environment. And we have to choose a sandbox or prod equivalent runtime environment where all my Snowpark Python program runs with dependent libraries, if any, and generate the expected output. In this video, we will understand how Snowflake helps us to achieve this goal by providing a secure runtime sandbox within a virtual warehouse alongside its limitations. Welcome back to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified, and to this everything about Snowpark playlist for true data professionals and data engineers like you. And in this episode, episode 8, we will see how to run a Snowpark Python program inside a Snowflake sandbox, so called Snowflake runtime environment within the virtual warehouse. We have already finished 7 episodes in this playlist. We are going to discuss many different topics related to Snowpark which is covered in this 12 part series. You can pause the video, review the topic and jump to a specific episode if that interests you. Links for all the videos can be found in the description section or above in the info icon. These videos are recorded in 4K resolution. Follow the instruction for better resolution and to learn it faster. Before we proceed, I have a quick announcement. I have published more than 100 videos covering different topics under different playlists. And if you find it hard to get into a specific topic, or a subtopic or a specific concept, use this summary card for a quick search. Summary card download instruction is given in the description below. For additional queries or a specific question, feel free to drop me a note to my Instagram account. So let's review a simple Snowpark program that is loading data into a table from an internal stage location. So this is my Snowpark Python program which loads the data from internal stage. Let's quickly understand. From line number one to line number four, it is all import function. This is my logging configuration. This is the method where I'm getting the session object and I'm getting the session object by calling this method from line number 21. Once I receive the session object, I simply change my context. Then this line finally drop the table if it exists and we are dealing with the order data. Here it will run the drop statement and followed by the collect. As we know, Snowpark is also lazily evaluated. After executing the SQL statement, you have to run the dot collect method to really execute it in Snowflake. Line number 35, we are reading the parquet file and this is the order parquet file which is available in this location. Once it is read, we are calculating the count. Next, we are applying a two filter statement where my status is paid and shipping status is delivered and then we are again doing the count to understand if the filters have reduced the number of count or not then i am running order by class and finally printing this count message and on the line number 53 we are writing into a table and for that i am using save as a table method with mode append now let's run this snowpark python program So it got executed successfully and if you look into this line it says so before count was 905 and after the filter the count is 162 okay and the table is created successfully and the data is also populated into the table now let's go back to snow site and quickly check and this order table is created let's click on it i can see it has 162 records which is matching with my snowpark log this and let's see the data preview this is how my data looks like which has order id customer name mobile name quantity and all the payment status is paid and shipping status is delivered as per our snowpark program and if i go to the query activity 
and you can see it is insert into and the create table so this two statement shows that the table is created through the snowpark because my driver is python snowpark so far we are good now we need to move this snowpark program into snowflake so it can run within the snowflake secure sandbox if you closely look into this snowpark python program all the logic is embedded inside the main method from line number 19 to line number 53. The session object that maintains the connection with Snowflake instance is specified in the line number 20. So when we deploy this piece of code, really don't need a live session object as it runs within the Snowflake instance and environment. Hence, we have to tell Snowflake sandbox, please provide the session object to this runtime Python environment so the rest of the code can be executed using this session object. If you pay close attention, the main method has only two dependencies, the libraries it is using, for example, logging or assist and the session object. If these two set of items are made available by the runtime environment, this set of code can be executed in that sandbox without any issue. In this chapter, we are going to focus one specific way of deploying the Snowpark Python program into a Snowflake sandbox environment. So to deploy, we need to make some adjustment to our existing Snowpark Python file. Once those adjustments are done, wrap it inside a stored procedure and then create that stored procedure inside your Snowflake instance. So let's see what changes need to be done in our program and then how we can create a stored procedure and call this stored procedures from your snow site and then how the snowflake program is actually called and we will review it through our query activity i have already created a stored procedures using the snowpark program and i have opened both the program side by side this is my ch underscore sp dot sql and this is my python program and if you look into this this is the name of the stored procedure which returns a table you can return anything. This is the language. The language is Python. Runtime environment is 3.8 and the packages which is required is Snowflake Snowpark Python and this package is nothing but this package. Now handler is main method. Here also my, this is a main method and this is comment execute as a caller. If you look into the import part and this import part is matching with this import part, my entire piece of code is available inside this as keyword and I have simply copied pasted the entire main block in my stored procedure. The changes which I have done it, I have excluded this system and logging import for simplicity and I have kept only my snowpark specific libraries. So here if you see line number 10 and 11, I have snowpark as well as my functions imported. This is my main method, which is matching with this main method. I have removed all the logging part. We will see the logging separately. And this session object is also removed. Here, I am getting the session directly from this main method through a callback approach. We are not going to discuss about the callback approach and all those things, but for a simplicity, whichever method is part of this handler will automatically get the session. Now, rest of the code is exactly same. There is no difference. Here I'm reading the data from parquet file, getting the count, applying the filter and giving the order by and so on. Since everything is in a single code, I have to escape the single code with backward slash. And this is how it looks like. So it's not that if you have really created a Snowpark Python program in your VS code editor, it can simply be translated into the stored procedure. There are minor adjustments which are required. And as you run it, you would understand that. Once the data is written into the table, I am returning this data frame and this return should match with your return on the line number two. If it is a variant or if it is a string or if it is a float, your return should match with definition. Okay. Now let's copy this code into our snow site and try to create it. So I'm back to my snow site and I have already copied pasted the entire SQL statement to ensure that I'm able to follow the color coding i have removed the single quote from as a statement but i will put it back you can see this is my entire snowpark program and before i run it i have to keep everything inside a single quote else it will not work 
Now this is my demo database and Snowpark schema. Let's create the stored procedure. So it is created successfully. Now let's describe it. So language is Python here, good. And this is the entire statement. You can see the entire statement, you can copy it. And these are all installed packages. And this is my package. Do I have this package available in this? Let's quickly copy and check it. So these are the packages which are available in my sandbox environment. So it has a Pi Arrow, a Snappy, a Snowflake, a Snowpark 1.4.0, and SQLite, a lot of things are there. We are not going to discuss how they're going to be utilized and that will be covered in a future chapter. But right now, I just wanted to show what all packages are already installed in the sandbox on which this stored procedure will run. Now let's run this stored procedure using a call keyword. And this is my demo virtual warehouse. So when you are running a stored procedure, which is created using a Snowpark Python program, you don't need to specify that this is my sandbox requirement. The sandbox will be created automatically inside your virtual warehouse. And in this case, it is a demo virtual warehouse, which is a medium sized virtual warehouse. Let's run this. So it got executed successfully and this is what the result it brings on the screen. My Snowpark Python program through the stored procedure returns a data frame and it also populate data into my order table. So let's check the order table. Before that, let's quickly validate the query profile. So this is how the query profile looks like, which has a value clause step, extension function step followed by the result step. And if I click on the extension function, which is primarily running extended function, I can see a lot of information. So it says that average Python environment creation time 0, 0.0 and average Python UDF decoding. So it has done a decoding. And here you see Python sandbox maximum memory is 103 MB. Okay. And average Python UDF. So a lot of details are there, which talks about your sandbox environment, which is created here. And when I come to the query detail, I can see the data. Uh, from this operation. When I come to this database explorer, I can see my stored procedure called stage two table is created. And here the language is Python. So it returns a table and it is not a secure and my entire Snowpark program is available here. Good. And let's quickly check the order table is populated or not. So I have the data available in my order table. Okay. So overall my Snowpark Python program is running inside the snowflake secure sandbox so now you understood there are minor changes we have done in our existing snowpark python program which was running on our local machine there is another way you can create a snowpark program and for that you can simply click on this plus button and say python worksheet when you click on a python worksheet and it creates a snowpark program where a sample code is already given by snowflake let's say i have to deploy this snowpark program if you look into this python worksheet it has a couple of things the first of all it has a settings in the settings i have a main handler i have a return type table which i can change it to a string or a variant also change this name of a main handler to something else okay here all the install packages are listed automatically if you are using any external library which are not available in the secure sandbox which we have just seen you can first load them into your stage environment and from the stage environment you can import them we will see it in future chapters i can write any kind of a snowpark python code here by creating multiple functions but i have to make sure my primary function is a main function and all other functions are being invoked from this main function once it is done i can click on this deploy and from here i can deploy so let's say so this is the name and i can say if it exists replace it now let's click on deploy so this is created and i can click on go to procedure detail and if you observe it has created a stored procedure by wrapping the entire snowpark program here under the procedure this procedure is available so this is how you can create your snowpark python program as a stored procedure deploy them and using the call keyword you can call them or you can make it as a part of your entire workflow through the task or a task procedure. when you create a stored procedure using the deploy button the sql statement looks something like this which is also new to me i have never seen a sql statement like this where it says with python underscore worksheet as a procedure 
returns followed by the entire SQL statement, which actually create this stored procedure. So this is an interesting SQL statement uh, for me. I assume this awareness chapter has brought some light how to deploy your Snowpark Python code into Snowflake Secure Sandbox via stored procedure and how it looks like when it is executed. Thanks for watching this episode 8. Our next awareness chapter, chapter 9, will be an interesting discussion as Snowflake is pushing hard to replace Apache Spark, an open source distributed computing engine. And we will see if Spark can survive this push from Snowflake and what Databricks, which is a company behind Apache Spark, is doing to kill this competition. So don't forget to watch the next interesting discussion. If you learned something valuable from this episode, don't forget to press on the like button and share with other data engineers and Snowflake developers. Happy learning and keep growing.